Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody. We have a fabulous episode today. Today, we talk about the Bernie's Mountain Dog. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very entertaining and exciting interview because if you're contemplating or even thinking about getting one of these, you need to watch this interview. Yes, we talked to Beth and she has two Bernie's Mountain Dogs and is a wealth of knowledge. I actually found out about her through my book club, through Larissa Wall, called Saved by the Book Club. And uh, we read her book, Atticus, which is a fictional tale, but inspired by her Bernese Mountain Dog, Atticus. And she has a Bernese puppy named Radley. And if you're a reader, you probably recognize those references and their names. Mm -hmm. Um, But she is a wealth of knowledge, and we had a great time talking to her. So without further ado, let's learn all about the Bernese Mountain Dog. All right, we are here with Beth and we are going to talk all about the Bernese Mountain Dog today. So I've actually only met one Bernese Mountain Dog and this was many years ago when I worked in a real estate office and one of the um, husband and wife teams there, they they got one. His name was Bonus because he was, I think, a bonus dog. They didn't think the dog was going to have that many puppies and um, really, really sweet dog. But what I found was that they don't have a long lifespan. So that's kind of what I, my experience with the breed is. Um, they're a beautiful dog, but I, I, I read Atticus, the book <laughs> about your dog Atticus, and um, he's a mischievous fella. And oh yeah, I can tell you, I don't think that's part of the breed. That's just Atticus. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we talk about that a lot where, you know, like even our two dogs, you, you know, Finley's very vocal, Riley's not, they're not supposed to be very vocal. So it's just personality. Sure. Yeah. Um, but you have two Bernie's mountain dogs. So tell us about them, how you came about to get your first and, and just anything you'd like us to know. Yeah, so um, I do indeed have two. I've got Atticus, who's uh, nine years, four months. And then I've got Radley, who will be eight months. Or I'm sorry, nine. Yeah, nine years, four months. And then Radley will be eight months next Friday. So she's still very much puppy. Um, And I don't remember... I remember seeing one somewhere. It could have been on TV or something. I don't know, but I fell in love with, with, with how beautiful they are. I mean, they just got gorgeous markings and they've got these brown eyebrows that seem to (laughs) convey emotion or whatever. I mean, like I I can almost feel like I can see what they're thinking inside their head, but um, I'd always been a golden retriever person. I mean, I've always had dogs my entire life, either rescues or golden retrievers. And um, I had lost one of my golden retrievers to cancer. And I thought now might be the time to consider getting a Bernie's mountain dog because they are a bit of a financial investment. I wasn't ready up until then. Uh, so we started looking around for um, a really good breeder and it's not easy to find them. And when you do find them, um, there, there's not a lot of them out there. So you tend to have to wait for one. Uh, and you're right, they, I, you had mentioned not a long life expectancy. I think the average is seven to eight years. Obviously mm-hmm. Atticus has blown by that number, but I do believe that is a result of um, his breeder and the, 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 the health testing that she does on all of the lines. I mean, you know, hips, elbows, different cancers, Von Willebrand's um, eye issues. Um, uh, there's a myelopathy that they can get. So um, it doesn't guarantee you won't have that crop up. As you know, my mitogaicus has cancer. He has two cancers actually, lymphoma and mast cell, but it's doing phenomenal. So Um, yes. So I found a really, really good breeder. And when you find a good breeder, it's not a guarantee. You're just going to hand your money over. They, I mean, she interviewed me for like two hours to make sure I was the right fit to get one of her dogs. And, um, and, and she co-owns it with me. I mean, she doesn't let that dog go. She, she, you know, she wants to make sure, um, that she's got an involvement and I was okay with that because she wants to make sure the dogs are well taken care of. Um, you know, I, no desire to show him or show, show Radley or anything mm-hmm. like that, but it was really to make sure I got 
a, as healthy a dog as I could to keep them as long as I could. Because as you know, we fall in love with them and we don't ever want to lose them. So that was kind of how I got into Bernese Mountain Dogs. And I will have to say that they're my dogs. I, I love my golden retrievers. I have, I still have a golden retriever, but um, I, I think I'll always have Bernese Mountain Dogs now. Yeah, I I think the same with us and Border Terriers. I know that we will rescue in the future um, and they are harder to come by, you know, probably not, maybe not as hard as burners, but, you know, I, I know that, you know, the chance of rescuing is slimmer for these breeds. It is, yeah. <laughs> but um, so they're a large dog. They are. And I, they have beautiful, luxurious coats that I'm sure awesome. shed. <laughs> Do they shed a lot? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I will have to tell you, I, I don't groom my dogs a lot. Their coats are so amazing. Um, you've seen a lot of pictures of Atticus and probably some of Bradley on Instagram. Um, but the white part of their fur never gets dirty for whatever reason. I mean, it's so I, I have them groom about uh, every two months wow. and I don't really do a lot of brushing in between. They do shed, it comes out, but they're, they're, they don't, you know, they just really stay in great shape. Now they're not out there swimming in the lake or hiking in the woods or anything like that. I mean, they're, you know, Atticus is a couch potato, but um, they, their, their fur is amazing. There is no doubt about that. And it's Radley's is particularly, she's conked out beside me right now, but um, hers has just turned from that fuzzy puppy fluff to she's really getting that really pretty soft, silky coat. And now a lot cuddling with her. <laughs> That's amazing that, I mean, I would think that they would take a lot more grooming than, and, and again, that could be due to your breeder and, you know, I do think, I do think that's part of it. Um, I have, I, I've, I'm in a wonderful Bernese mountain dog community. That's one of the great things too, is, is I've, I've joined the regional club. I've met, you know, tons of people with burners and, um, you know, you can tell if, if one hasn't, you know, you can just tell there's a difference in yeah. when they breeders put their time and effort into getting, um, you know, really, a really strong line. Now, do you use any, um, like special food? Is there a special diet to help keep the coat nice? I don't, um, necessarily do it to keep the coat nice, but I do feed them quality food. I think more go along my fears of cancer or other health related issues. So I, um, my, my uh, dogs get a combination of Fromm's kibble and I use some Honest Kitchen dehydrated with it really to make it more palatable. Atticus is very finicky. He won't just do kibble. So he's got to have a little bit extra in his. But um, I do think the diet's important. There's a lot of great dog foods that just happened to be the one we, we settled on because Atticus was a little finicky and liked it. So there you go. But we know he's not finicky with people food, right? Like, he'll oh, he's not. <laughs> no, it, you know, and, and I'm laughing about this right now. He just had um, chemotherapy last week. And so his appetite gets even more finicky. But um, he refuses dog food for about five days after chemo. And the vet seems to think he's playing me. And there is some truth in that because I will go and make his dog food and set it down just literally turn his nose up at it and then but I'll hang around in the kitchen like is she gonna give me some people food or what and of course he's got cancer he's gonna get people food so yeah. that I'm making grilled chicken or, or whatever so um he's in the play me phase right now he didn't eat his breakfast this morning I just told him I said you're not getting anything else and I probably when we're done I'll probably make him some people food he's no dummy <laughs> <laughs> they are much smarter than a lot of people give them credit for but I know you and I are not those people we <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely and the thing the funny thing about it is I'm really really strict with my dogs not to get people food I mean they get their food they get some healthy treats, you know, whatever like that, but I don't, they're not scrap eaters or whatever. Cause I want to keep that. It's another important thing with the Bernese mountain dog is to keep them on the lean side because they are a larger dog. It's easier on their joints. Um, it, most people want to get their Bernese mountain dogs. and want to bulk them up because they're such a big dog and they think, you know, big equates to great, but it's not the healthiest for them. So Atticus has always been on the lean side. I'll keep um, Radley that way too. But yeah, you know, listen, when you get cancer, you should have whatever you want. Yeah. 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 So we had to start feeding Finley a, a homemade diet just because that was recommended by one of the many vets that we went to and, and we figured, you know, it's, you know, of course we should. And he gets, sure. his, you know, it's turkey, spinach, and broccoli loaf, kind of like a meatloaf. So yeah, you know, and, and it's probably delicious too, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. you, can, you can join him for dinner. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, so, so you mentioned cancer. Um, is this common with the Bernies or? No, not necessarily these cancers that he got. The lymphoma, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, is probably the most prevalent cancer of all dogs or whatever. Um, and the mast cell's pretty, um, but the mast cell, if you catch it early enough, is fairly, um, it, it, I don't want to say curable, but it's, it's more treatable than the lymphoma. The lymphoma is not curable. So all I'm doing is hoping to put him in remission. And as long as he's got a good quality of life, you know, keep him, keep him with me as long as we can. And he's tolerated the chemo really well, other than being finicky on the dog food. He's still hungry. He still eats. So, um, but both of his cancers are advanced stage. They're the, um, the uh -uh, they're the highest or, you know, the highest grade that they can get. And he's just been doing phenomenal. I mean, November will be a year since he's been diagnosed. Oh, and great. so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm real fortunate that it seems to be working. we got a really great, I take him to NC state here in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's one of the best of best schools, you know, in the nation. So um, real fortunate to have that, that ability to do that. Yeah. That's a great resource right in your backyard. Yeah. Um, so what were, what were the, uh, symptoms or were there any symptoms? No, that's a great question. So <clears throat> I found the mast cell, you know, petting him and, and their fur is incredibly thick. They have two coats, they have an undercoat and a top coat. And I will have to say this, a lot of people think to shave their, their, they, you know, should I shave my burner in the summer? Uh, uh-uh, no, that, that, that undercoat, even as big as their coats are, helps keep them cooler and stuff. But, um, I was petting him and I found the lump on his um, back left thigh and he's had lumps before, and I always get the vet. I use a mobile vet. She comes out, aspirates. It's usually benign. And she aspirated this one, and she said it's mast cell. And I didn't. Know, I had to go research. I didn't know what it was. So um, I made an appointment. <clears throat> Unfortunately, with COVID, it's really hard. You know, people are buying all these COVID dogs now, so it's hard to get veterinary care or to get in. And so it was like a three week wait. Three week wait to get him into a surgeon at NC State to look at the mast cell tumor. Um, and so while I was waiting for that, I decided to take him to a friend of mine who has Newfies and she, she has, she grooms herself. And so we took the high powered blower and went over his entire fur to blow the, see if I can make sure I wasn't missing any lumps. Yeah. And while we were doing that, she said his lymph nodes were swollen. I didn't even know where lymph nodes were on a dog. So she had felt them here in the backs of his legs and under his arms and they were, and she goes, Beth, that does not that is not good. So I called NC State up and I was like, his lymph nodes are really swollen. And so when we went in, the surgeon, you know, looked at the mast cell, but he took one look at the lymph nodes and he said, that's not good. Let's, we're going to aspirate it. And so, and, he, and so to answer your question, first and foremost, absolutely no symptoms, mm -hmm. completely healthy. I would have never known this dog had two cancers. Yeah. Um, so once they determined it was lymphoma, that was the more uh, dangerous disease he was dealing with. So they targeted that. Um, there is the gold standard treatment for lymphoma is called CHOP. It's a series of three different chemotherapies plus prednisone. They modified that to take out one of those drugs and slip in a different chemotherapy that would target the mast cell at the same time. So they were able to hit both cancers with this modified type of chemotherapy and they never did remove the tumor on his back leg. So this is the other thing that's um, really fascinating. My vet, when she aspirated it and found out, she said, I want you to start him immediately on Prilosec and Benadryl. They gave me a dosage that was appropriate. I don't know if you've ever heard of this or not, mm -hmm. um, but, but mast cells, um, are histamines. And so the Benadryl is an antihistamine. And we started him on that and it started shrinking the tumor before we even ever got him in there. So that tumor over the almost last 10 months has shrunk to almost like a little pea size. Just, I think, well, I think some of it was the chemotherapy, but it started shrinking before mm -hmm. just on that. So he takes Benadryl and Prilosec every single day. And that helps to keep the mast cell tumor um, in check. And so we're not going to operate on it. I did not want to put him through a surgery at this point when it was so stable. Yeah. He had also had, um, metastasis in his spleen and liver and they went and, um, after the first, um, couple cycles of chemotherapy went and looked and it cleared up. So the chemotherapy mm -hmm. was definitely being effective, you know, in hitting that. So, um, yeah. That's amazing. Like, uh, yeah. 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 Now, what did, and, and I guess I'm kind of going down a rabbit hole here because we've just dealt with a large mass that, yeah. you know, got, we got very different 
takes from different vets. And we actually found a specialist here in Atlanta that apparently people travel from all over to come to because she's a dermatologist. So I'm curious what the actual mast cell tumor looked like on the skin what, when you saw it. Was it just a lump or did it have an appearance? Good question. It was just a lump. It wasn't red. There was no oozing. Um, it, in fact, it was slightly movable. So I thought it was just a fatty, yeah. you know, uh, cyst or something like mm -hmm. that. So um, I really did not think it was going to be anything bad because it looked like any of the other little fatty cysts he's had aspirated over the years. So that's an important point for our listeners and viewers to get yes. those aspirated because, you know, we often think, oh, it's just a fatty cyst because- yep. Yeah. And you all know. dogs get them too. I mean, that's just it. And you can get lulled into this false sense of security. Yeah, that, that's, well, all that, that's all it is. Cause I was stunned when she came back and said it was cancer. I was like, yeah, yeah. 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 So what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. like Finley's little, little, um, like papillomas. They look almost like a little cauliflower piece right. of skin on there. And we had had one or two biopsy years and years and years ago. And yeah, it's just a papilloma, you know, he might be prone to them. So we just thought no big deal. Well, the one actually turned into cancer. So it is yeah. very important to stay vigilant about that for it sure. Is. Um, thank you for all of that insight. Cause yeah, I, was, I know that maybe more than what you asked for, but I, I've learned so much. Yeah. I think it's important that, you know, as dog parents, we share that with one another because it is, you know, I, we spent way too much time going to all these other vets when I wish we had gone to this dermatologist yeah. sooner. So right, right. yeah, you do sometimes get lulled into a false sense of security and, and need to need to get some other options. So yeah. 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 So what are, what are some other health issues that people need to be on the lookout for with a Bernie's mountain dog? Um, definitely, you know, elbow and hip dysplasias. Um, it's, you know, I've learned a lot over the years having, and I've ha always had big dogs. I've had great Danes and you know, the Goldens and stuff like that. And I really wasn't overly aware until I got involved in the Bernie's Mountain Dog Club and being around some people that really, really know their, their stuff about big dogs. But, um, like Radley's all, you know, almost eight months old and I still don't let her do stairs, you know, and she, she's big. I mean, she's almost 70 pounds right now, but their you know, growth plates are still growing and stuff like that. And I don't want to do anything to go along the, I, the lines of keeping their elbows and their hips as healthy as possible. Um, my breeder requires me at a year to get her hips um, and elbows tested. So I will have to do that so they can add that on to. Now, I'm never going to breed her, but the information is important um, in that line to know if the siblings get sick, like it's important that she knew Atticus got sick and what he has. Yeah. Um, the Bernie's Mountain Dog um, community has a database that's called Burner Guard. And I don't know if other breeds do this, but it's, it is uh, put together. It's a health registry of all, and it's, it's got nothing to do with the Bernie's Mountain Dog Club. It's got nothing to do with the AKC. It strictly has been um, you know, created and it's, it's a massive database and you can go in there. You can go in and look at um, Atticus and Radley and, and kind of, you know, what their parents' health history was and their parents' health history and stuff like that. So it's right. one of the things, if anybody is looking to get a Bernie's Mountain Dog and you are wondering if the breeder is a good breeder, they should absolutely be in Burner Guard. I mean, any right. good preservation breeder is going to be in Burner Guard. It, and the people will say, oh, but my dog's registered with the AKC. It doesn't mean anything. No, that's you just a right, filling out an application and paying some money. What a fantastic <laughs> exactly. tool. That's a fantastic yeah. tool. It is a wonderful tool. I don't know who started it, but it is brilliant. And it is. So we try, always try. And it doesn't matter if you don't have papers on your dog. I mean, if you rescued your Bernie's mountain dog, put them in the database. Mm -hmm. they, they, it, 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 it is open to every single um dog out there of this breed um, and to just create all this wealth of information so you can um, check. But I would, I would tell anybody that's thinking to get this breed, do not buy unless your breeder registers with Burner Garden. You can go look at that. Where, okay. where do you, where do you go to see that? It's Burner, B-E-R-N-E-R, -E Guard. I think it's G-A-R-D. There might be an E on the end of it without me looking up, dot .org, I believe. But if you, if you type in Burner Guard into any, it should pull that database up. We'll, we'll check it out and put it in the, the it show is, notes. Yeah, Sounds great. Yeah. Well, that is a wonderful tip on if you are looking for this breed, then you, you better, you better do your research folks. Cause you know, you, you want to make sure, and gosh, what an amazing database to be able to see and to know that the breeders that are in there really care about the health of their breed. So 
it is, and it's expensive to breed these dogs and to get all of this health testing and everything like that. That's how, I mean, it's one of the reasons why they're an expensive um, dog, but when you've got a dog that's only got an average life expectancy of seven to eight years, you want to take every single thing you can do to make sure that you're going to get one that's going to live long. And I've got so many friends that their dogs, I have one, she just lost hers. He was 13 years. You know, I've got another friend I think he's almost 15 years old. I mean, so you can, I think that, I think you're going to start seeing people taking um, care of their animals. I mean, just by example of me, you know, getting Atticus treatment or whatever, it's extending his life way past probably, you know, what. So um, you definitely with a good um, responsible breeder, I think your chances of having one live way past the life expectancy is pretty good. Yeah. And I'm really interested in what you said about the not letting Radley, you know, take the stairs at a young age. That's, you know, that's something that, I mean, I've never had big dogs, so that wouldn't even cross my mind. So that's probably something that other large breed owners should know about when they get a puppy, because you could be inadvertently doing some damage to the joints and you don't have yeah. to yeah, you know, my breeder was like, you know, I, you know, she really, you know, I let my dogs on the furniture. And so she was like, that's fine. She said, don't let her jump off of it, you know, pick her up and take her down and stuff like that. And so I did for the longest time, like I've got a bench going up to my bed so she can walk down the bench and not have to make that, that impacting um, jump. And so her, you know, exercising is walks right now. That's what she does. She, and she, you know, so, um, and, you know, when she hits a year old, we'll start uh, letting her you know, be a little bit more adventurous and stuff. And meanwhile, well, you're like buffing up because you're lifting this now, what, 70 pound puppy? Yeah, I'm not lifting her anymore. She, <laughs> it's she's really big enough to step kind of off the couch yeah. now rather than have to make that jump. So, but um, well, it's, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. So you're, you're getting your deadlifts in every day to, <laughs> you know, exactly. I know, the workout regimen. Well, I take, she's in a, um, I've got her in the canine good citizen class right now. And I can tell you right now that she's never going to pass the test in two weeks because she's just too, too, um, spazzy as a puppy right now. Like, you know, one of the things in the test you've got to do is you got to have a stranger come up and they got to sit and let them pet. I'm like, she won't, she'll just wiggle all around. So I've got her in this class. I know she's not going to pass. It's fine. We'll keep working on it. We'll take the test again, but I have to, I have an SUV. So I have to lift her in and out of it and I barely can get her out. And I'm so embarrassed every time I go to this class, cause it's like in this big storefront and everybody's watching me try to wrestle this <laughs> dog out of my SUV. Um, so I'm really glad that class is in. We didn't think Finley was going to pass and he passed first time. First time. You know, Atticus, I waited until Atticus was a little bit older. He, I took him in at, at a year, but I wanted Radley to um, start earlier and, and part of it's my fault. I am not training her every day. I mean, these dogs are incredibly, incredibly smart. I can teach her in about two minutes to do any type of command I want, but the consistency of doing it, and then she'll do whatever I ask in this house, but I take her outside and she's like, you know, <laughs> squirrel, squirrel, you know, and she's not going to listen to me. Yeah. So um, we're just doing the best we can. And, you know, Naticus takes up some of my time during his training and you know, doctors of visits and things like that. So um, she might take a little bit longer, but you know, that's the other thing you haven't asked this, but I was going to um, bring it up the amount of fun things you can do with this breed because it is a working um, breed and they were originally bred in Bern, Switzerland as farm dogs. Their big thing was pulling carts, you know, of milk, you know, cans up the mountains. And they're also good herding dogs. I mean, nothing like a border collie, but they will, they're good herders. And you can do a lot of that stuff. So many of my friends, you, you know, they do drafting. Um, we have a really great friend who, her dog is amazing. He actually just took third place at Westminster in the Bernie's Mountain Dog group, but we hook him up to his cart at Halloween and, and she goes trick or treating with me and my daughter and he pulls candy and mulled wine for us to drink on the you know, thing. So you can do really fun things. I really want to do some of that with Radley. I never did it with Atticus, but um, you know, herding is really fun too. I've got a lot of friends that do herding. They herd ducks and sheep with their dogs and it's just a lot of fun. They're really great at, Atticus is really good at doing rally. He's, you know, he's just, they're super smart and um, things like that. You know, no desire to really get him in a show ring, but doing those kind of really fun 
you know, things with them is there's a lot you can do with the Burning's Mountain Dog. Yeah. So if you're wanting to do some activities, this is yeah. a good dog to, to choose. And, exactly. and I think that that in, intellect also probably comes with the whole, you know, I'm not going to eat that kibble. I'm, I'm wait, I'll wait you out. <laughs> I will wait for the yeah, good. He's, he's just way too smart. And I think Radley's going to be the same way. So are they, um, are, are they very active dogs or are they like, okay, I'm going to go do this task and then we're done. And then I'll go lay down. They are not high energy dogs. So, uh, outside of the puppy phase where Radley has got a ton, um, they, and, and I'm like you, we're, I'm, I live in the South, like y'all do, you know how hot it gets here. So in the summer, it is out to go to the bathroom and right back in again. They want the air conditioning. They want to lay on the vents. They want to sleep all day. Um, <clears throat> and, but the, the cold weather, you know, gets them a little bit more excited. Atticus is definitely, you know, more active in the winter. He loves to, you know, our winters, it's cold for us at 50 degrees. So if it gets 50 degrees or less, he's laying out on the back deck you know, just, <laughs> oh this is the greatest but no not high energy dogs at all but they will go out and do their work I mean they you know um will go out there and they'll cart for you and you know for however long you want them to do because they do want to work but they're not the type that get destructive if you're not working them you know how some yeah. some dogs can um if you can't get that their need to do those things out um with a caveat that Atticus was incredibly destructive, but that was, that was more my fault for not watching him. I mean, I've, I'm in this um, Bernie's Mountain Dog um, Facebook group and every day there's a post, my dog ate my drywall, my dog. I'm like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. But I have learned it's from not watching them appropriately, you know, and I crate my dogs when I leave the house because I know the potential is there for any dog to chew on anything or get in any trouble. So, um, but they're generally, not going to be destructive if you're, you're not um, providing that working thing. Okay. And, yeah. and the bigger the dog, the more surfaces they can get on. So oh, you know, not the carrier's not going to get on your counters so you can leave stuff on your counters. But if, if you've read uh, your book, Atticus, we know that he can, uh, he can get what was it? Um, uh, was it a pound cake in the story? He, he got a banana, a loaf of banana bread. He literally picked up the glass dish it was in. It was covered with saran wrap and gently put it down on my tile floor. It didn't drop it because it would have busted. Yeah. And I found, you know, the, the thing on the floor with the saran wrap peeled nicely back <laughs> and the banana bread gone. <laughs> He's so smart. He's like, I've got to be gentle because I don't want to eat any shards of glass and I don't want to eat the saran wrap. I don't want to alert mom. I'm up here because I was down in my office uh, yeah. eating her banana bread, you know? Yeah. He got away from it with it. Totally. It's a smarties <laughs> pants, that one. <laughs> so, okay. So we've talked about their coat, their activity level. We've talked about that. Um, we've talked about the health issues, which I think are very important for, mm -hmm. for people to understand. And again, you know, other large breed uh, owners to understand. Um, what am I missing? I will say this about the health. Um, I do want to add this on is, is um, I purchased pet insurance for Radley. I did not yeah. for Atticus. Um, and I have spent an arm and a leg on his chemotherapy. It's just, and it's not, um, I mean, it's just not affordable for many, many people to be right. able to get this treatment. And, um, you know, I'm not going to go through that with Radley if something like that happens to Radley. So I think it's important. And back when, I, you know, pet insurance used to not be very good, but it's really, really good right now. There's a lot of really great options. And um, it, it, to me, it's well worth the money you put into it compared to what you could spend. Yeah. Uh, on them. I was going to ask you that because of what we just went through. And again, Finley's 17 and a half. So when we got him, pet insurance wasn't really that great. And, right. you know, they're a healthy breed, you know, up until this point. So yeah, I call, I call him a uh, Honda Civic now because <laughs> he's a used Honda Civic is basically what we spent. <laughs> exactly. Well, we did that to, with Atticus. We called him a double oven because I wanted to get a new double oven <laughs> and I couldn't because we were, we were spending money. He, Atticus has a history of, um, they call it dietary indiscretion, but it's basically him eating stuff and it getting stuck in his stomach. So he's had a couple of surgeries. And so after that first surgery, we called him double oven. I <laughs> like double oven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, they just, they cause so much trouble for themselves sometimes and they don't realize what a, uh, what, what, what that cost is for us. And yeah. you know, I think that, like you said, that's really important for 
people to understand. And, and I definitely want to look into the health insurance too. Maybe you can email me the one. You I will. I will. Because I think that's really important because that did cross our minds too, is, you know, a lot of people don't have the money to, to, to do that. And, you know, like in our case, you know, Finley's great. I mean, you know, he's old and he's slow and, you know, his vision's going and his hearing's going, but I mean, you know, it's not his time. So the surgery had to be done. Um, so yeah, we, we, we get that, that it's. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people get involved in, and they have a pet and they don't realize that pet is just like a human. It, 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 as it gets older, it compounds and compounds on health issues and if you don't have a savings account set up for it or, or yeah. health insurance or a combination of both, it can really, really hit you hard. And some people, unfortunately, can't afford it and they have to well, go. They can't, or, or they deplete their savings for other reasons. I mean, you know, it, it, like I would have sold anything to help any one of my dogs. And, and some people are like that. But, you know, some people just don't care either. That's the sad down, down side of it all. Yeah. Well, I know I, I was depleting my savings, just sure. going from vet to vet. And then, you know, finally finding out that there was a solution. And so, yeah, I, Fantastic. gosh, could we just like, you know, sh- share this with other people so they understand I'm looking yeah. at my notes here. Um, so they don't need a ton of exercise then. Right. I mean, they, they, they just need their walks and their love. <laughs> and, you know, um, I have a fenced in backyard, so I don't even take um, Atticus or my golden retriever scalp on walks. They, I throw them out in the backyard and they run around and play with each other for like five minutes and they're like, okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty low maintenance in that respect. They are low maintenance in that respect. Yeah. Okay. All right. And um, overall, like what, what is it like to have them in your family? What, are, what is it like as family members? So they're an incredible family dog. I, Atticus was a year and a half old when I brought my daughter home from the hospital. And I was not sure. And I had Scout as well, too. Scout's a year younger. So Atticus was two. Scout was one. And I did not know how they were going to do with a brand new baby. But I mean, God, he was enamored with her from the start. Um, I can't say that they are overly gentle because they just don't know their own size. So my, my, I have a really tough kid. She's gotten knocked over a lot growing up. Um, they are um, very loyal to their owners. They can be aloof with strangers, but um, once uh, if somebody comes to my house, they, you know, Atticus and Radley will, you know, golden retriever, oh, hey, you know, whatever. Atticus and Radley will watch and stay back. And when they realize I'm okay with that person. Then they want to come up and get the love. Um, Yeah, they um, are very sensitive dogs. So in training, I mean, I don't believe in any negative training or, you know, whatever. It's all positive reinforcement training, but um, even harsh words are are hard for them. They're just very sensitive Mm -hmm. kind of souls. So um, there's that. Mine too, I don't know if this is true for the entire breed, but they're not big cuddlers. Like I think it's because they get hot. Atticus will get up in bed with me every night and he'll let me love on him, but then he wants to go lay on the tile floor. Same with Radley. She, she loves her crate. She actually will just go sleep in her crate because it's cooler there. They'll come up for a little bit. Whereas my golden retriever is in bed next to me, <laughs> right up against me all night. So um, they're not, my two aren't overly cuddly, but, um, but they do want to be by me. I mean, I, from move from room to room, um, my golden retriever could care less. He's going to stay where he's comfortable, but my burners will move with me and always stay by my side. Interesting. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I would, I would imagine they're too hot to cuddle. <laughs> they're just, yeah. And you just want to, cause they're so soft and fuzzy. Yeah. They're like, Oh, get off me mom. It's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> so you should take that, those moments and, and just relish them when they do. Right. Definitely. <laughs> so, so what is, what is the optimal Bernie's mountain dog owner. What is, what does that look like? Is that a new dog owner or is that someone that's maybe had some experience? What, what do you, if you want to be a Bernie's mountain dog owner, what do you need to know as far as first time? You know, um, that's a really great question. And it's something that's I've thought a lot about lately because I am in this Facebook group. And so because it's such a popular breed, there's so many brand new puppy owners in there. And I mean, uh, you know, constantly the questions are, I'm getting my Bernie's mountain dog next week. What are some tips? 
you should know this stuff before you buy your Bernie's Mountain Dog. Um, and this goes for all puppies. Puppy, like I've had my dog for a week and I can't get him potty trained. It takes longer than a week to potty train a dog. I mean, and it takes, you know, I don't understand. I've shown them how to go outside and I've praised them. Why aren't they still going outside to pee? Why? <laughs> like, because it takes repetition, 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 repetition it takes, yeah, right. you know, dedication. Um, you know, my dog is chewing my rug up. Well, because you let them out of your sight. And when they're bored, they're going to go be destructive. So those are the general things with a Bernie's Mountain Dog that are applicable, I think, kind of to all dogs. I think um, because they are an expensive dog and because they can, you know, have health problems, you want to make sure that you are, I think, financially in a place where you can, um, uh, you know, heartworms, good heartworm medication, flea and tick medication, good food, you know, getting your, um, you know, uh, you know, yearly physicals or whatever, it's all expensive, it all adds up. Um, so I think you want to make sure you're kind of in that um, place uh, to do that. And then I do think you have to be mature enough to have that consistency to get them trained. And, and a, a prime example is Atticus. Um, I wasn't um, very good at it back then. Um, and he, you know, would end up eating things that I just didn't see or I did not catch. And it ended up costing me a couple surgeries. So you, you do have to, I think, be vigilant, um, you know, with them. Um, but, but that's probably across the board. And you're for, talking things like like a pair of rolled up socks or. Oh, he loves socks. It's pretty okay. much socks, yeah. socks, socks, socks. And it's not just those two sur surgeries. He's eaten the other socks and I've had to go in and have some emergency room visits. Um, one time they were able to pull one out with an endoscope and it's hard. I've got a, I got a young child. She's only seven years old. I mean, we're really good. Like if you look at my house, there is nothing on the floor he can get. I'm really good at it. But I'm telling you what, he will find something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we were find something. Yeah. We remember those days with our terriers, you know, like people would come in and set a purse on the ground and I'm behind them picking it up and putting it. I'm like, no, oh, he's going to go into your purse yeah. and take stuff. Like, exactly. yeah, exactly. So it's really important that people understand, you know, if you're a, a very laid back person that likes to throw stuff everywhere, you know, you probably shouldn't get a big dog of any size that can ingest in, or, in just something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, and I will have to say in, in fairness to the breed, I mean, Atticus is a, he's a special soul. Um, he, 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 he's got some anxiety and he's got, he, a, a lot of it is separation anxiety for me. So every, almost every one of his dietary indiscretions have been when I've been traveling to, to go to book signings. Um, and he just gets really worked up if I'm not around. And so after like the fourth time I had him over at NC state, they were like, we'd like to refer you over to behavioral science. <laughs> so that's the great thing about having a vet school. They've got like a dog shrink that you can take the dog to. So um, I did take him there and they did. They said, he's, he's just got a lot of anxiety. Um, I think again, they're sensitive and he just, it's really, you know, and so he is on fluoxetine. He's been on fluoxetine for a couple of years and that's really um, helped to keep him a little bit calmer. And, and when I say calmer, he's not running around shaking or anything like that. I mean, he's, he's pretty chill dude. I mean, yeah. but, um, but yeah, he does have separation anxiety. I'm, so he I'm, definitely gets afraid I, when I leave. I'm still picturing Atticus laying on a, on a couch and the doctor sitting there. Going, so <laughs> tell us, tell me what happened in your childhood <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> made you this way. <laughs> totally. Totally. Shrink that dog up. Whole pipe in the patches, the patches on the sleeve. <laughs> it's like, okay. Wait. So I know that you've got that prescription for the anxiety. I will just let you know, we basically cured Riley of her fireworks and thunderstorms anxiety through CBD oil, which has been amazing. Email me on that because I have a great interest in that, but I am, I don't know enough about it and I don't know where to buy stuff that's quality. That's the thing is, um, but I have a lot of people that have been telling me to do that because Atticus has incredible firework and thunderstorm phobia. I mean, his is really bad. So I have to treat him with trazodone, but the problem with trazodone is you got to get it into him a couple hours. So if one of our Southern surprise storms that pop up out of nowhere, it's, it's not fun, particularly when it happens like at two o'clock in the morning and I don't know what's coming and I've got, you know, 90 pounds of dog on top of the head <laughs> because that's what happens. What's, um, nice but, about, what's, I'm sorry, what's nice about the CBD is once you get them on a regimen, those emergency or pop-up thunders 
You don't have to worry about them. At least in our case. I mean, and she had, I would say pretty severe anxiety where she would try to dig through the carpet. Atticus does that too. Yeah. Yeah. And just like, uh, pacing and panting and you know she's small enough we could pick her up and I'm like she's gonna have a heart attack she's so scared and so people have said CBD and we tried some uh treats baked with CBD and that didn't work you know we tried all the other and I won't name products but we tried all the other things that you can try shirts and calming devices and stuff nothing worked and so uh the little pet boutique that we go to has the it's called pet relief and I'll send you Um, We don't get sponsored or anything. Um, It's from an organic farm in Colorado and they specifically make it for pets. And we're very big into organic and natural as Mm -hmm. much as much as we can. And um, yeah, we, we got it for her. It was like, okay, we're just going to try it because New Year's Eve is in like three days. We started giving it to her like three days before. And we saw a difference just in that short time, not a huge, but you know, she was a lot less. And then as Michael said, as we got her on the regimen, I mean, now when one of those thunderstorms pops up, no big deal. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I'm definitely interested. Okay. Yeah. You actually have to drag her in, you know, if she's outside pottying, you have to drag her in. It's like there's thunder. She normally would have, you know, yeah. Beat you to it. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely interested in that. I will have to ask Atticus as oncologist because they, they're very big on not me giving him any other supplements. Like I'm, I've looked at a lot of holistic stuff and I've asked about it. There's some really good stuff out there with some turkey tail mushrooms and stuff. And at this point they're like, we don't want you to give that to him, but CBD oil might be different since that goes more to the anxiety type. Yeah. Uh, let us know what they say. Well, but well sure. we know how it is. It's like, here's the list of supplements and medications. What can we use? What can't we use? Exactly. And he takes so much already. You know, it's like, I hate to, get, it's like, I hate, but I hate to give him the trazodone because he takes so much medication as it is right now. It's just, I hate right. to add one more thing into it. So the one thing we talked about just before we started recording, and I, I just do want to kind of mention this so people understand the importance of knowing where you get your dog. Um, I did not realize how popular Bernie's mountain dogs have become. And with any popular breed, um, you tend to get uh, breeders that pop up that aren't, uh, they're not in it for the health of the breed. They're in it to make money. And, you know, it's kind of funny to say breeders making money because as you said, it's an expensive dog to breed. Um, First of all, do you have an idea of what people should expect to pay for the breed. And then um, can we talk just for a moment about maybe backyard breeders and puppy mills that are just going to churn out dogs for profit instead of. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not only that one step further, there's actually scammers out there that aren't breeders at all. In fact, this just happened to somebody in this group I'm in, they set up a fancy website they show you beautiful stock photos of Bernie's mountain dogs. I've got a new litter, you know, I'm taking, reservations, deposits, send me $500, blah, blah, blah. And then the website's gone the next day. Mm -hmm. And they, and, and that is a huge problem. I'm sure this happens with other breeds too, but it's, it's a huge problem with Bernie's mountain dogs, just scammers or people that aren't, aren't breeding. They're just getting money from people. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, we can talk about price in a minute, but first and foremost, most reputable breeders will never ask for a deposit until the litter is born They can um, verify that the puppies are healthy and are going to be strong and verify that they may not want to keep one of them for their own program. So a lot of times breeders won't even know what they have available to give in for, for, for several weeks. So um, my breeder does not even require a deposit. So she is, you know, she'll like, they've got wait list or whatever like that. And you might be below somebody, but most good breeders don't even require a deposit. Um, and they're not going to um, offer those puppies up. I will also say, it, you don't go and visit and say, oh, I, I like this one first pick. And those breeders are going to place the puppy that they think is best for your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's really important. Like I said, even though my breeder had sold me Atticus nine years ago, I got another two hour interview of a rat. I mean, <laughs> she knows me and I still got grilled. Hey, buddy. Hi, Atticus. <laughs> Hey, hey, come up here. Huh? Oh, look at that tail. Oh, both of them. They're awake now. They're like, you've got limited time, mom. <laughs> oh, great. Now we've got her talking. So anyway, 
Bradley, here, there's nothing to mark about. It's, um, uh, the people are talking, they're right here. They're not at the door. Hey, Bradley. Hey, Bradley. Come here. 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 Uh, so anyway, th those couple things about as far as readers. So to stop, please. There's nobody here. Um, go through your regional Bernie's Mountain Dog Club, so you can start at the national level, and they have a breeder referral program. So don't go through the AKC. Um, you know, do that if um, because. Because it is really hard to get one. I mean, like right now, I'm hearing most breeders. It's t it's going to take you a year to at least get to to be high enough up on a list to mm -hmm. where a, a, a puppy might become available. Go to dog shows. Go to obedience trials. Go to places where Bernie's. Might, go join the local club and go to their meet and greet events. Get to to meet breeders that way because they are incredibly picky who they're going to let your dog go to so it, it truly is not about the money now speaking of price stop please um uh you're going to pay anywhere between two and three thousand dollars for a um a puppy that's great health lines they're in it for the preservation standard um in burner guard have mm -hmm. has spent the money on all of the health testing that needs to be done um, so if you're out there and you find somebody that is selling them for 800 bucks, they're, you know, yeah. they're, it's a puppy mill. I can tell you right that. The other thing is, um, go visit the breeder. Do not take, you know, for what's on that website or when you talk to them, I mean, puppy mills are going to have their dogs in outdoor kennels. They're going to be filthy. They're going to stink. They're going to um, probably ship the dog to you and you'll never you, see where they live. <laughs> absolutely. Um, the, 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 the bitch will be in bad shape. She'll be skinny. You can tell looking at her, she's probably not, you know, been groomed. My breeder raises these dogs in her home with her. I mean, she, they took their dining room and have literally converted it into a massive well-being box. And so, you know, these are, um, you know, her, her family and, and she does it to start teaching them manners by the time they come to me, you know, they've not been living in cages outside or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I, I would never even think about getting one unless you went to the property and, and, but like I said, if <laughs> you're the one that is really going to be on trial with a breeder, yeah. if it's a good breeder, they're going to really vet you yeah. very, very well. And they want to make sure your lifestyle is good. My breeder, the reason why she, we had a two hour you know, serious talk about getting Radley was because Atticus had cancer mm -hmm. and she wanted to make sure I was in a good spot, you know, type thing. And, um, you know, she kept followed his treatment very closely and how well he was doing and because he was doing so well, you know, she ultimately, um, felt it was okay for us to do that. And it's been a good thing. I mean, Radley's made him so much riskier and playful and, and stuff. So it ended up really working well, but yeah. she was extremely cautious about it. And that's probably good that that is, you know, anybody who knows anything about cancer knows and just health in general, your mental attitude is so important to your healing. And so that's great that he's got a buddy now that, you know, they can frolic and, you know. Yeah. And it's in the oh, interesting thing is, is Atticus is Radley's great uncle. Oh. And so when they are side by side, they, I mean, they, I mean, except for Addis, you know, has a blue eye, which is against breed standard, but I love it. That's why I picked them out. I was like, I really want that one. Can I have that one? Um, they lay next to each other and they lay the same way. Like they make like one paw out in their head like this and they'll fall asleep together in the exact same position. Oh, side awesome. side. And it's, like, I get so many of those pictures. I'm like, oh my God, y'all really do share some DNA <laughs> there, you know? I saw that one, I won on Instagram when she was much younger and they're both laying down, I think like frog leg, you know, super frog -legged. Frog -legged. Yeah. And it's just yeah. so cute. And even their socks are like almost the same size. Their white socks are almost the same size. Their blazes almost, they're, yeah. Um, all Bernie's Mountain, they're all, not all, but they have this tuft of white hair at the very back of their head. It's called a Swiss kiss. You know, their, their Swiss kisses look alike, you know, it's just really cute. Yeah. And if anybody wants to follow you guys on Instagram, it's uh, Atticus Crazy Dog, right? That's correct. And it's, that was Atticus's um, IG account. I've started adding some stuff for Radley. I'm not going to start a separate one for Radley, but I'll probably add, you know, more pictures of her in there. So. Yeah, Absolutely. 
Well, this has been so enjoyable for us and informative. I hope everybody listening really learned a lot. I think, you know, you've got a lot of insight just on large breeds in general, which is super yeah. helpful. Um, anything else you'd like to tell us or? No, I think you've asked some really important things. I appreciate you doing that because I know a lot of people, you know, um, don't know where to start in this. It's for any breed. I mean, that's just it. I mean, you want to make sure that you do your research and you know exactly what it takes to raise a puppy and how much effort goes into it. It is a, it's like a full-time job. It is. <laughs> so, it is. And particularly, you know, with um, people buying the puppies during COVID, everybody's working from home. I'm going to get a dog. And now everybody has been home with their dogs. And now they're going back to work. And these dogs, you know, they don't know what to do with them or whatever. They haven't, you know, um, I, you know, I just, I'm a big believer in crate training, but not everybody does. But if you don't got, you know, they're not training them to get ready for when you have to leave now. Yeah. So that, yeah. yeah, the separation anxiety is going to be off the charts, I'm afraid. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. So, so if you um, haven't gone home yet, you need to start uh, training your dog to, you know, whether it's crate training or leaving the house. You know, leaving the house. so that they know for periods of time. Yeah, absolutely. So, but um, I appreciate you wanting to talk about um, the Bernie's Mount Dogs. I just love them to death. They're a great dog. Well, we yeah. appreciate you talking to us yes. about it. And I think there's a lot of great information for people who are interested yeah. in this breed. Yeah, uh, you're a you, wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Definitely, definitely. And I want your book, so make sure you. I will, yeah, I will connect it. I'll, I'll get your address and send it to you and, and you can see what my, uh, my work I is like. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really All right, guys. It. All right, have a great weekend, okay? All right, All right. thanks, you too. Bye. Bye. Wow, I, really, I could have talked to Beth for hours. Yeah, she's got so much information about the Bernese Mountain Dog. I mean, just a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, and it goes to show you, you guys, if you get involved in your local breed clubs, you can learn so much and networking with other owners of the breed that you have. And that we found that with the uh, terrier owners and the terrier clubs. So definitely uh, think about that if you have a particular breed. And um, drop us a comment if you have a Bernese Mountain Dog, what you learned about the Bernese Mountain Dog or anything else in general. Absolutely. And hey, look, folks. There's a, if you're watching us on YouTube, there's a little thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that, please, for us. We, we really would appreciate that. And also subscribe and hit the notification bell. It'll let you know when we put these videos out. We put them out every two weeks. And we really, 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 really look forward to doing these for you guys. Yeah, and you can catch us everywhere online, social media, at Dog Nerd Show. Drop us a line, dognerdshow at gmail.com, if you would like to talk about your breed. And just if you want to chat in general, we'd love to hear from you. Yep. Until next time, folks, we appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.